Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Great Houses of Calderia, which is a feudal grand strategy game that focuses on the dynamics between the ruling families. So we'll have our family, our own house, and when we begin we're quite small, we own just a teeny tiny little bit of land, so we gather resources, we do some trading, we go on diplomatic missions, we build things and improve our land, and the idea of the game is that we use our family's strengths to defeat our rivals, increase our standing, and eventually maybe even take the throne of Caldaria for ourselves. Now this is the early access version of the game, it came out today on Steam, and of course if you're interested there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description where you can go and check the game out a little bit more if you would like to. But anyway, time to get on with it, let's dive in and take a trip to Caldaria. Caldaria was once known as a paradise, however the rulers of old grew hungry for power and knowledge, and devastation followed. The exact reasons for the downfall are long forgotten, and for centuries Caldaria was taboo and never to be visited again. Again. When the new emperor learned of the land, he disregarded the warnings of his council and granted a mandate for any noble house to claim parts of the land in his name. He appointed a viceroy to rule Caldaria on his behalf. However, just two generations after the recolonization, bickering has arisen. Rumours are spreading that the Viceroy himself has succumbed to the same old megalomania that afflicted the rulers of old. Okay, so now we go through the process of setting up our house. So of course we're going to be called House Cupboard, because what else could we possibly be called? Next up we have to pick our House Tradition, which is kind of like a house specialisation, I suppose. So we could be Peacemakers, who have faster population growth. We could be Idealists, where it's easier to maintain happiness. We could be Warriors, who are of course better at fighting. We could be Isolation who are a little bit paranoid and because of that safety is always a little bit higher. We could be schemers and have better spies or we could be scholars and get cheaper upgrades. And I do quite like the idea of either peacemakers to get more population appearing because the more population we have, the more workers we have to go and do more jobs. Or we could be scholars where upgrades are cheaper. So each building upgrade is 25% cheaper. So we can go around the place and build a lot of very useful, very handy things to make life a bit better around the realm. Do we go for scholars or do we go for peacemakers? Do you know what? We're going to go for scholars. House Cupboard are going to be very scholarly indeed. Very clever. Lots of books around the place in House Cupboard. Oh, now we get to pick the head of the family. Okay, so who's going to be in charge of Cupboard House? Head of family is the leader of your house. They have the final say on family matters. Okay, so it's quite a big important decision and we have to pick from one of these four candidates here. So we could pick Eodelinda. That's a very exciting name, although I do think you can change the names. So whoever we pick, we might be doing a spot of name changing, but we could pick 33-year-old married Eodelinda. We could pick 45-year-old married Nieva. We could pick 31-year-old unmarried Xavier. Or we could pick 43-year-old unmarried Zeno or Zeno possibly. Okay, so they're the four candidates. And of course, because it is a grand strategy game, all the characters have their own stats. So down here we've got Diplomacy, Economy, Intrigue and military. They're the four base stats for each character, and then the characters have their own traits, and also they've got these kind of ability things here. So, Eodelinda is fabulous, which is very exciting. Your charm is unstoppable. You demand attention, and you get it everywhere you go. Oh, that's quite good. It's a bit better than Xavier's one, because Xavier is a murderer. Oh dear, you're taken life unjustly, even if you weren't convicted. People know what you have done. Okay, maybe we don't want a known murderer leading our house. That'd be quite bad. Let's not pick Xavier. Okay, so what have we got in terms of stats going on? So 17 isn't too bad for diplomacy. 12 economy. 13, is that like intrigue or something? Or cunning or something like that? Intrigue. And then 11 military. Okay, so Eodelinda is looking pretty good. 17 diplomacy is not too shabby at all. Nieva doesn't get anywhere near 17. Uh, Zeno has got... 18 in economy, but then you've got two that are below 10. So intrigue and military are below 10. And then their traits as well give them special things. So bridge builder there is plus two diplomacy, but also if Eodelinda does get involved in a social conflict, which is an actual thing in the game, they can use the compromise ability. And they're benevolent. That's quite good. Kindness is human nature. I like that. Okay, I'm kind of swaying toward Eodelinda. So, benevolent means we lose military and intrigue, but we get diplomacy. And again, in a social conflict, they can use the benefit of doubt ability. And then they're humble, which means they can use the humble ability in social conflicts. Okay, so I think we don't go for... Are we going for Nieva? Are we considering Nieva? I don't think we are. 
I don't think we are. I think it's either Eodelindo or Zeno there, or Zeno. But yeah, wary, wary is military down, gentle, a gentle. They get the cheer up ability in social conflicts. That sounds quite funny. <laughs> Come on, it's not that bad. Cheer up, give us a smile. Um, okay, they have got 18 economy though. But they've got 12 economy. I think, do you know what? We're going to go for Eodelinda. We might rename them. Um, because they're quite good. They've got good diplomacy. Stats are pretty good. Um, they're a bridge builder. I like that. They're benevolent and humble. But they're fabulous. We're going to play as a fabulous character. But we're not going to keep them called Eodelinda. I mean, that is a very good name. It's a very exciting name. But we're going to rename them. And I think we know what their name's going to be. Of course it's Betty. Obviously it was going to be Betty. It was always going to be you, Betty. Who else could we have in charge of House Cupboard than Betty Cupboard herself? So Betty's going to be in charge. And then I have renamed the other characters anyway. I don't know if those names changes are going to take effect because of course we're not choosing them for anything they're on offer betty we're picking specifically these we're not kind of choosing for anything but we'll see if it takes so we've got barbara and we've got bernard of course we have to have those in and because we do have a murderer in our midst we're gonna have martin we're gonna hark back to our buoyancy series from many years ago and have murderous martin in the ranks too so there we go betty barbara bernard and martin are ready to go and betty is in charge okay next up we have to pick our house origins so this dictates where we actually appear on the map so where did we set up did we set up in the flat lands for a high population and a crop bonus? Did we set up on the hillsides where we can have crafters unlocked? Did we set up in the mountains for a material and ore bonus? Or did we set up out in the steppes with varied effects? I don't really like that. That's a little bit too vague for my liking, so maybe we won't set up out in the steppes out in the west, so ignore that one. I'm thinking... If we are scholars, which we are, we're very scholarly, we love a good book and we love building stuff, I think maybe being up in the mountains where we get a materials and ore bonus might be quite handy because if we are going to be doing upgrades to buildings, I imagine we might need materials to do that. I think in this game materials is just kind of generic stuff, so wood and stone and all that kind of stuff is rolled into materials. So we're going to need those to do all sorts of building upgrades and we're quite good at building upgrades because we're scholarly. So I think that would make sense. I think that will make quite a lot of sense. So do you know what? Let's begin in the mountains, shall we? Let's go and be some mountainy people. And now we have to pick exactly which mountains we set up in. And we've got a choice of six, I think. We've got Vacuus up in the corner over here. However, that says hard starting conditions. So we're going to overlook that one straight away. Then we've got that one next door, Nerva. Okay, so Nerva has gold. Nerva might have gold in the mountains, not so good for horses, but everything else looks pretty good. And they've got 15 buildings already put together, and there are eight workers ready. Okay, that could be quite good. Down here, they've got famous steel and a high starting population. Okay, they've got an additional worker. They've got nine. However, not so good for crops and livestock because they're up in the mountains. That might be quite tricky. Metal ore, though, you get a lot of that. So, okay, that's interesting. Over here, a low starting population. They do, however, have 18 buildings put together. That could be quite good. That might tally up quite well with our scholarly background, which is all about doing buildings and upgrades and things. So that could be quite good. Again, crops, not so good. Horse is not so good. But okay, that's fine. Over here, Vicenza... Not so good for crops or horses or livestock, but they have wine. Unique wine. Oh, that sounds exciting. 15 buildings built, 8 workers. That's okay. So yeah, they get a lot of grapes. Plus 50% grapes. Okay, so the hills over there, the mountains, are, I don't know, pointing the right way to grow grapes. There's a lot of lovely hillside vineyards going on. Uh, materials plus 20%. Wine plus 30%. Maybe that's what we could do. We could go there and set up and become the wine people. That could be our trade. We can use that for many things. Or up over there, we've got Manguanda, which is not so good for crops. But, uh, oh, hang on, low starting population and hardly any buildings. But we're not going to go for that. Either it's going to be Vicenza there or possibly which had the which had the special steel. That one there. I think we can change the name as well. I like that. I like the idea of having fancy wine. I think that's quite a fun thing. That's quite a unique sort of you know, distinctive thing that our little part of the world can be known for. So do you know what? Yeah, that's quite good. I like that. But we're not going to call it Vicenza. 
we're not going to call it that. So what do we call this place here? We're House Cupboard. Okay, so what do we call the region? Let's call it Geek, because if we do that, that means that House Cupboard can sell Geek wine. I like that. That sounds wonderful. So yeah, there we go. We shall call that region Geek. Okay, look, here we go. Welcome to the world, everybody. Welcome to Calderia. And it's quite big, as you can see. The map is a very big map indeed. There is a lot going on. And if we look over here to the top of the big map, that lovely brightly coloured bit over there, that's where we live. That is the realm of Geek. Look at that. It looks wonderful. And I do like the art style in this game. That's very pretty. It kind of looks like a watercolour painting, but in 3D. It does look good. It's like a sort of a living, moving watercolour. It's very pretty to look at. I do like that. So that is where we live. Geek ruled over, of course, by none other than Baroness Betty Cupboard, which is all very exciting. So let's take a little look at what's actually going on, because there is quite a lot on the screen for us to take in. So over here on the left, we have all the members of the House of Cupboard. So at the top, we've got Betty Cupboard. Then we've got Barbara. Then we've got Bernard. And then I have renamed a few of the people to make them in suiting with the ways of the House of Cupboard. So we've got Malcolm Cupboard. There's Malcolm. Then we've got Teapot. Then, of course, we have Murderous Martin. There's Martin that we knew about. And if we just move down a bit, we've got Penge Cupboard. Now, normally, I don't put myself into games. I don't put Penge Cupboard into games very often. But I thought, do you know what? He's eight years old. We've got a young Penge Cupboard right there. He can go and become somebody else's ward. And he can grow up to be the leading light of House Cupboard, I think. So that could be quite fun. We'll see what happens. I mean, already... At the age of eight, Penge Cupboard has a military skill of 12, which is pretty impressive. And he's carefree, impatient and daring. Wow, he sounds like a kind of a swashbuckly type of person. Carefree, impatient and daring. I like the sound of it. So that is all we have in terms of our family members. That's not many. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've only got seven people. We only have seven people, so maybe we do need to try and sort that out a little bit. Maybe get some more family members in, get some stock letter writing going on with a few of you, possibly. That is something we can look at. And then across the top here, we have all of our resources. So we've got food over there. Food is currently coming down quite a bit, so we might need to look at that. Because, yeah, we have 188 food in storage, but it's coming down by minus 8.7 every day, cycle, whatever that is. I don't know. But every time all these kind of things get recalculated, that's coming down by 8.7. That's quite a lot. So we have to look at that. Then we've got grapes. We want to make sure we have a lot of those because, of course, we make fancy geek wine, which is very good. Materials. We want loads of those to do upgrades. That might be an issue. So that thing there is showing us a livestock, but we're not sort of generating any of that at all because we have no herdsmen. It's a little bit tricky to have livestock up here because, you know, they tend to fall off the mountains a bit. So that might be a little bit of an issue to get some livestock. Then we have metal ore and we're quite good at picking that up because we're up in the mountains. That's very good. And then we have a number of resources that I don't think we can get our hands on very easily. I think this needs a combination of various people doing jobs and also upgraded buildings to be built. So, for example, horses requires herdsmen with a pastures building. Now, we don't have that. I don't think we have any herdsmen at the moment, but we definitely don't have the pastures building either. So we're not going to get any horses right now. And the same goes for that over there. Steel needs miners with ore smelting. Luxury goods require a keep with talus. With a talus, I don't know what that is. I don't know whether it's a building or a person or what, but we can't get luxury goods right now. And we can't get parchment because we don't have smiths with the cementation process, whatever that might be, some sort of paper making process. However, one thing we can get is lovely wine. Hooray! Wonderful. So we might not be able to eat, but we can certainly drink some lovely wine. So there we go. We can all be very drunk and very hungry. Marvellous. So yeah, we can make lots of wine. That's very good. Geek wine is very famous throughout the world. So that's quite good. And of course, at the end there, we have lovely, lovely generic currency in gold, which is marvellous. So they're the resources. Over here, we have the objectives. Then we've got messages that just pop up saying, hey, you've forgotten to do a thing or hey, you should know about this kind of little notifier type things. And then I think we should have a look at this over here. So these are the winning conditions. So the game is won in a fairly sort of, I was going to say linear way. There are a few areas where you can branch out, but you have to kind of complete these goals in order. So we start over here where it says start. I quite like that. Nice and sensible. We know where we're beginning. And then to get our first objective done, we have to do what it says over here. So initial growth, assign an overseer, make an official visit and build a thing. And you know what? We can get that done. That's going to be nice and easy. So we can definitely do that. And then it kind of moves on a bit. So make a trade, send a court member. And then eventually you get to over here and things get a little bit trickier. 
So over here, look, declare war, win a humiliation war against the Count, all that kind of stuff. So it gets a little bit trickier until you get to the very end goals, which are either become the Viceroy or become the King. So rule the land one way or the other. So there we go. That is kind of the ultimate goal, but there is a way to go before we get there. So yeah, to win the game, you just kind of work your way through these objectives. So it's not like a sort of a free-flowing game. It's not sort of like Crusader Kings 3, which is, you know, similar in concept to this with regard to the houses and families and dynasties and that kind of stuff. Because Crusader Kings 3 is more about the story of just what happens and, you know, what's going on. This does have a kind of a clearly defined end goal. You can win the game. You can become, you know, the Viceroy or become the King. And that's it. You then win when that's achieved, which is a little bit different to Crusader Kings 3. But there we go. There are the victory conditions. And I think now we have to try to work out exactly where we stand in the grand order of things. So right now, Betty, our highest ranking person in the family, is a Baroness. And that, I believe, is the lowest of the low. We are the lowest of the noble ranks. So Baroness is quite low. Baron and Baroness is the bottom of the ladder. So who exactly do we report up to? So let's go and have a little look, shall we? So we can view what's going on over here, I believe. So how does that work? So we are a vassal of House Palamo. So we can click on them and go and look at that. So right there, there is our boss. So we're not actually kind of neighbouring our sort of our liege there. We're not neighbouring the person who's looking after us. There is another place over here. So Duke Calamaro is in the way of that. Okay, so we are Baroness Cupboard. So Baroness Betty reports into Count Palamo. Okay, so go and view what's happening there. So House Palamo is the liege of all those places there. And as I assume as well, so House Valentina, Catala, Espelta, Trinca, Vargad, Laguna, and Cupboard. But they themselves are a vassal of House Calamaro. Okay, right. So, oh, crikey. Okay, so if we come out of that a second, so our boss's boss, so our liege's liege, is next door to us. They've got a fancy dam over there, look. That's very impressive. We do have a lovely aqueduct type thing going there. That's very pretty. But yeah, so our liege's liege is there. So we have someone quite powerful right next to us, kind of in the way between us and our direct liege. Okay, so we've got, this. so Baroness reports into the Count, the Count reports into the Duke, and in turn the Duke then reports in to House Monsbara, which I think is the top. I think that's it. This is the top. This is the head honcho. That is it, the Viceroy. Okay, so they're the top. And then in terms of what we need to worry about, it comes down to Duke Calamaro, then Count Palamo, and then us. Okay, right, so we know where we are in the world. We're relatively low down, but okay, right. So now let's go and do some stuff. Let's go and actually get some stuff done because we've looked around and we've looked at what's going on, but not actually got anything going. Oh, by the way, I can very happily report that, uh, that uh, yeah, spacebar is pause. Spacebar is pause. It's also unpause. So we'll unpause time, look, like so. And then I can very happily confirm that spacebar is pause, which is wonderful stuff. Well done, game. Good job. So let's now take a little look at what we can do. So if we pop over here and look at what's happening in Geek, we can see that we have all these different people working on various things. So we've got one person, one little kind of silhouette of a worker person there, making wine. And that's all we can have. One out of one. We've got one out of two miners. We've got two masons. Two people working in the vineyards, one farmer, and one person in the keep, I believe, gathering some money. So I think we're going to have to do something with our crops because we are currently losing quite a lot of food every day. And that's just not going to go very well. So we might need some more farmers. You can have infinite farmers. You can have as many farmers as you like. The only thing is, I bet our farming isn't very good. And also, are they not happy? It might be that our farmers aren't very happy. So, uh, yeah, you can choose how you pay people as well in this game. So if we click on the farmers, ah, we haven't got the upgrade done quite yet. We haven't got the upgrade done. So at the moment, we are paying our farmers in food, which makes perfect sense. But if we get particular upgrades done, if we actually build certain things, which we're very good at because we're scholars, you can then change what you pay them in. So rather than paying them in food, you pay them in wine, <laughs> which does seem a little bit strange. I don't know where they get their food from if you start paying them in wine. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they don't care. They're so drunk they don't notice how hungry they are, possibly. But you can pay them in wine. But I think what we do is, at the moment, we are making quite a lot of materials. And that's what masons do. So let's pick up, just drag and drop a worker from masons into farmers. So do that. So now we're on minus 6.4. Still not brilliant. But 
to make it a bit better, we can assign our family members to help out over here. So we can, for example, send Teapot over to work into there. So that's an increase from 5.3 to 7.1. I don't know if that's good or not. That's 5.6. Okay, Teapot seems pretty good. Yeah, okay, Teapot might be the best person we can have doing that. Betty's going to be too busy doing other stuff. Um, yeah, Teapot, go and help the farmers, please. So now we're only on minus 4.6. Still not good though, is it? So how much are we getting in terms of grapes? If we took one person out of there and put them into there, we're now losing food and grapes. Okay, we don't really want to lose grapes because that's bad. So possibly for now, maybe we don't go and get any, um, any ore. That might be okay. And then let's go and put some more people in the vineyard. So we can make some more grapes, so we can get some more wine, because that's what we do. Uh, and then in terms of food, we're going to have to do some building, I imagine, and possibly some trade as well. Maybe we have to go and do some trading to try to get some more food on board, because I think we are always going to struggle for food. So maybe it's worth doing a trade mission, but there we go. So we can get Teapot, can go and help out over there, which is good. So there's our first kind of official thing that we've done, but yeah, they're not, they're not working very well. They're not working very well. Yeah, growth per, per per worker is minus one for the farmer. So we could do with unlocking the thing which allows us to pay them in lovely wine. That would be quite good. So can I record? I did do the tutorial for this, but it was quite big. So can I remember how that works? Ah, it's over here. There we go. Building. Okay, so in terms of farmers, we've got crop fields and crop rotation. They've been unlocked. And things that we could potentially have but we need more resources for, are thatched cottages. So that over there, which would allow us... Ah, that's what we want. We want that, because if we build that, I believe we can increase their wage level, pay them in wine, and they're going to be happier. But we need 250 materials. And right now, we have 106. So that's not going to fly. Or grist mills means we make 10% more food. That might be quite good as well. But as we can see over there, that requires 500 materials. And we've not got anywhere near that to mount. So we can't do any upgrades right now to the farms. And I think that really is where we have to focus our attention. So, okay, right. So we've done that. Assigned somebody to go and help out with farms. And we've rejigged our kind of workforce and such like. At some point, we will get another worker. That'll slowly top up over there. And we'll get another worker. And we can put them where we like. So we're on 8 out of 10 people. Which is fine. That's okay. So now I think maybe we should go and do an official visit. So we've got to do these things over here. So let's go and make an official visit. And I think possibly we should pop over and see our boss. Let's go and see our liege, Count Palamo. So diplomacy. And let's do an official visit. And possibly Betty should go out and do that. Because you know, she's, uh, she's fabulous. So we're going to go and fabulously visit over there. She does look fabulous. Betty looks absolutely amazing. Um, okay, yeah, so send a person. And can we please meet the person in charge over there? Okay, so it's going to be a meeting of the top bods. That is, that is a very impressive collar. <laughs> that, that is one huge collar. Is that the style these days? Look, it's massive. It's like the bow of a boat. Good grief. Okay, uh, right. So here we can see the different kind of relations. So house relations... So I believe our attitude toward them, hang on, which is our dynasty one, right, family relations. Okay, so family relations is, that's the dynasty, isn't it? It's their personal relations. So, uh, yeah, Betty has, it's all it's in green, which is good. So Betty has 10 relationship points to that person directly, and they've got 15 points back for Betty. So, uh, yeah, humble to diligent, humble to recluse. So we've got 10 points. So that's okay. So yeah, we're sort of, we're amicable. 15 on the reverse. They sort of think we're okay. And then in terms of our houses, again, it's 10 and 15. We're still sort of okay with each other. So that's not too bad. Um, okay, so let's go and send Betty on a fun trip out. That's going to be good. So Betty will make her way over there. And they do go along the map. They kind of pootle along. You can see where they go, which is quite fun. So Betty has other business, which is fine. And then according to this over here, look, Penge Cupboard could go out and become somebody's ward. And if I recall the tutorial correctly, it did say that it's better for them if they go elsewhere and do their learning. So maybe, maybe we go over here. Can we do some diploma? Is it over here? Yes, ward. 
So if we go to our liege's liege and say, okay, would you like to look after Penge Cupboard? We think you're amazing. So yeah, drag Penge Cupboard into there. And okay. So what member of the other family should we have educating Penge Cupboard? Um, okay, so we've got a few people. Maybe don't pick the ones with the red, so sort of minus relations. Amea Calamaro has plus 35 to us. Okay, that's quite good. They like us. Um, they seem quite good. Arbitrary, reckless, and carefree. Oh, they're both carefree. Oh, that'd be quite good. I think they'll get on. So how about Young Penge Cupboard becomes Amaya Calamaro's ward? So we'll give that a go. So there we go. So we'll see Penge Cupboard wandering off down there at some point. Um, and then, yeah, then we've got two unmarried family members. So Martin, murderous Martin, might be slightly harder to find him a bride because, you know, he's a bit murdery. Um, and Bernard, they're not married. So, um... Okay, Bernard, how can we do this? Here we go, look, here we go. So Bernard, um, so yes, the two unmarried members of the Sioux Houses entertain the idea of future marriage. Okay, so we've got Bernard marrying Adan. Okay, um, how exactly is that going to work? Um, oh, hang on. Oh, I, hang on, Bernard. Hang on, Bernard's, oh, Bernard's, uh, Bernard's a woman. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, right. I mean, points to you if you notice my mistake there. Uh, right, okay. Bernard's a woman. That's fine. It's a, it's, a, it's a good name. It's a good solid name. Hello, Bernard. Right, Bernard, would you like to marry Adan Moncato? Because that would be quite good. Or well, we could pick you. You like us a bit more. Frido Moncato. They like Bernard a bit more. Um, they've got, they've got a good hat on. Um, but I mean, yeah, recluse, benevolent and blunt. Wary, forgiving, and gentle. Uh, recluse, calm, and blunt. Mm, maybe not over there, then. Maybe not them. Also, why are we all the way down there? Um, okay. Were well, they the only ones we had? So, Martin, cupboard, courtship. These might be the only options we've got. So, Martin, um, marrying Avra, Valentinia, with, again, an amazing helmet on. Stubborn, naive, and humble. Daring, fickle, and forgiving. A poet and a murderer. Um, do you know what? We could be an ally. We could be their ally. Do you know, let's do that, shall we? Let's just give that a go. Send. Let's just give it a go, and we'll see what happens with that. We'll wait for Bernard. And then, yeah, so Barbara, Bernard, and Malcolm are doing nothing at all right now. So I think, to try to get some food, possibly, could we go on a bit of a trade mission over there? So who's going to be quite good at trading? Um, Barbara, I imagine it's going to be the economy skill. So we've got 14. We've got 18. Bernard looks like the best bet. 14. Oh, and you're helping out with food, so not you. Right, Bernard, go and do some trading, because you're apparently very good at that. So you're wonderful. So she can go and do some trading. Um, and then we want to buy in some crops. Oh, they're on minus 9.3. Right. Okay. Uh, can we give them some wine? Has plans for crops. Okay, right. Not with those people then. Hang on a minute. We need to go somewhere else to do some trading. Um, they are lacking crops as well. Can we have crops for crops for wine? Ah, okay. We might be able to do that. But the trade is a little bit sort of biased against us. The moment it's a generous trade. So we're giving away quite a lot of our wine. So if we bring that down, hang on, so bring that up. Total 10 per trip required. Oh, they make five trips, I think. Okay, so do that. So we give away 50 wine, and we could potentially get, if we increase that, look, because the amount of money we're spending on this trade, so the amount of equivalent cash, is nowhere near what they're going to be getting from us. So hang on a minute. So bring that a bit closer. So what if that was like that? Trade valuation minus own. Bring that down. Buy has skeptic. So we get 350 food for 50 bottles of our famous wine. Okay. So let's give that a go. Shall we? Also, Dezeal Calamaro, who's doing their dealing, has an economy value of three. So hopefully Bernard can just bamboozle them with very long, complicated sounding words. It'll all be fun. Right. So send that out. So now I've got quite a lot of people doing stuff. Bernard and uh, Barbara and Malcolm, sorry, doing nothing at all. So... Let's put them to work over here. So, uh, yeah, Barbara, you can go and help out in the vineyard. 
Is that the best thing for you to do? You don't do very much, do you? Um, okay, go and help out in the vineyard. Or you better make him money. Um, make some money at 1.4 up to 1.5. It's it's better than nothing. And then Malcolm, 4.4 to 4.5. Malcolm's not very good at this. Okay, go and help out with the wine. In fact, no, go and help out with the masons. Because then we can do more upgrades. Okay, not exactly brilliant, but there we go. And now... If we unpause time, we'll see people go about their jobs. Look, they were sort of all pootle about. So some of them are going in the same direction, I think, now. But there we go. They'll all branch off eventually, I think. I think, are they all going out in that direction? They're all travelling together, which is good. You can see where they are, look. they've got little kind of wheel things on them and various things are happening. Although, um... Are they all going in the same place? Oh, they've all gone the same way. Who's supposed to be going over there? Um, okay, so now a new event's popped up in a rush. Burner Cubber negotiates a trade deal with Dazeel Calamaro, but something seems off. Dazeel is rushing the negotiations and is even offering more wares and negotiated if the deal is sealed immediately. Okay, so we're still giving away 50 bottles of our lovely wine for 350 food, which will keep us going for a good long time. The only thing is, why? What are they selling us? Is it all mouldy or whatever? So, um, affecting the outcome, so we can go and inspect Dizil's wares more closely, and affecting the outcome of that would be comparing economy. Right, 18 against 3. Take the offer, no questions. Comparing intrigue, they're way more sneaky than we are. Or why such a hurry? Compare intrigue, and our relations are kind of the same. Um, no, we're going to do that one. We're going to inspect the wares more closely and try and figure out why he's in such a rush. Bernard searches Dazil's wares, and under the facade they are clearly second grade. Dazil submits on providing quality products and the extra they promised. Oh, so now we get 420 food for the 50 wine because we went, Oi, this stuff's rubbish, what are you doing? Oh, that's marvellous. Okay, so finish that. That was a good trade deal. And now everybody's going out to do their various bits and bobs. Okay, request for wardship. Penjkobot has just arrived to Girolva, accompanied by his guardian. And my Calamaro is to take him in as, as a ward. Okay, yes, yeah, that person there. The guardian has decided that Penjkobot should show his skills. What should Penjkobot do to make a good first impression? Okay, so young Penjkobot there is pretty good at military. So I think you show your talent with a practice sword, because you're not that much good at the other thing. So, do you know, yeah, swing a sword around a bit and try not to knock anything over. Don't knock any kind of expensive vases off anything, and it'll be fine. House Calamaro, house covered, plus eight opinion of family. Okay, so that impressed her. So I think she might like, she might like him a bit more. And the families are getting on a bit better because we've you know, said, look, our ward is lovely, and they've gone, yes, they are. That's wonderful. Right, okay, finish that. So I think now Penge Cover is going to hang around over there for a bit. Um, and then we've got you. Hang on. So you're out to go and do some... You're in a courtship delegation. I think, yeah, you're going back home. So that is Bernard. She's on the way back home to uh, drop off a few, hopefully, bits of food. It'd be quite good. Um, and then, um, yeah, you, so Betty... They're going all the way over there. It's okay. We have to take a very long, circuitous route to get over to Count Palamo's place. There's not a direct kind of route. We have to go along this kind of raised thing over there. But okay, um, no interest. Martin Cobb has arrived at Sinizio to court Avra Valentinia. So far, Avra hasn't shown any interest in Martin, and there are concerns within the delegation that chance of marriage is slim. What should Martin do? Don't kill anybody, Martin. <laughs> Do not do any murder, please. Uh, find out about her interests. That is an intrigue check with diplomacy. He's not that good at either of those. Charm her is diplomacy and fate. Uh, marriage is a political affair, not a matter of love or willingness. I mean, he's daring, fickle and forgiving. He's not cold. Maybe, maybe we could try and charm her with a bit of diplomacy. And a bit of face. So the look of a the look of an imaginary dice in the background there. Let's give that a go. Martin Schapper reported that he and Avra are now talking intensively, and Avra has been smiling and laughing. It seems there is no doubt of their willingness to marry each other. <gasps> That's wonderful. Okay, so they're getting on. That's very exciting. Okay, right. And of course, yeah, our houses are getting on better. House Valentina likes house covered a bit more. 
And um, yeah, we're getting on. We're making friends out there in the world, which is wonderful. Okay, so finish that. So I think they're going to come back home, possibly. They might make their way back home. Um, we do need to construct a building, but it's going to take a long time for us to get all the resources, in, particularly the materials, isn't it? Okay, Betty's arrived over there. And she is on her first official visit, which is wonderful. Right. Safety negotiations. I, look at that hat. That's an amazing hat. Betty decides to pay an official visit to Zero Palamo's fiefdom, fiefdom to discuss safety protocols. Sounds wild. The delegation is welcomed warmly and Soros seems to be happy to host Betty, who starts to negotiate immediately when the perfect moment arises. How should Betty persuade Zero to improve cooperation? Okay, so we can plan together to fortify borders, but that requires our military versus their military, which is the same, but then it also requires trait. So our bridge builder trait will go up against their reclusive trait. Okay, but if we fortify borders, would that be a good thing? Would they be happier about that? They might be thinking, yes, brilliant. Bigger, stronger borders means less people coming in. So they might quite like that. Increase security in the cities... So military versus military. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah, our military and our diplomacy. Ah, we're quite good at diplomacy. And then highlighted traits. So benevolent is lit up on ours, but they don't have a trait for that one. So that might be what we do. Or uh, share criminal records. Is our diplomacy against their diplomacy? Highlighted traits, none of those, and a bit of fate. Um, I think let's increase security in the cities. We've got a better chance of that working. We've got higher military, high diplomacy, and we have a benevolent trait that lights up. So we should be okay with that. Betty tries to negotiate better terms, but then Sarah gets annoyed and they both just finish the meal. Ah, bother. Okay, that didn't work at all well. Safety did increase though. Safety increased, but Betty and Zero sort of fell out a little bit. And Betty's now got, oh, she's got dissatisfied. Oh, that's not good. Um, they'll end up with problems. 180 days that's going to hang around for. Crikey's. Okay, so Betty is a bit annoyed. So now she's going to make her way home. I think, yeah, we've got, uh, you're moving goods around still. So Bernard, they're just shifting goods around, which is wonderful. So I think everyone is keeping busy. Everyone's keeping busy. All the things are looking good, apart from, obviously, ores and livestock. But we're not using any kind of livestock, so that's not too much of a bother. And ores, we're okay for now. We're okay for now. We'll muddle through, I'm sure. Betty making a slow but steady way back home. But that's all okay. No messages going on right now. And um, yeah, we can see what's happening here, look. We can see what's happening. Oh, yeah, they've become friends. This is good. Received 84 crops from the caravan. Look, we're getting food. It's all very good. Pillars of history. Okay. Bernard passes by some old ruins, which remind her of old stories about the ancients and their culture. Okay, yeah, big ancient thingamajig on a hill, looks very impressive. Light shines between the huge pillars, creating patterns that look like dancing flames. She ponders how the ancients could have built these structures. Suddenly, she snaps out of these thoughts, feeling that someone or something was running between the ruins. What action should she take? Oh, hang on. So follow the shadow. Nothing affects that. Investigate nothing. Continue. Um, I think... Uh, Bernard, I mean, they're not very fighty. I mean, they're wearing a massive suit of armor and a helmet. You'd think they'd be good at fighting, but no, they're not fighty. So maybe, do we follow the shadow or investigate the ruins? Uh, we are wary. Would that come into play? Do you know what? Follow them. Follow the shadow. Um, Bernard decides to send some of her servants to check out the ruins to see if there's anyone hiding there. The servants are reluctant, explaining that the ruins feel cursed and ominous. She tells them that's just superstitious nonsense and they need to follow orders or they'll be left here to finish the job and find a way back home by themselves. Crikey, Bernard has no mercy. The servants run to the ruins and search for anything that looks out of order. They soon return saying there's nothing out of ordinary there. The journey continues with an awkward atmosphere. Okay, so Bernard's now picked up doubting for 180 days. Botherations, okay. <laughs> that's not ideal. That's not ideal either. Okay, never mind. Right. How much did we need to build that thing? So go to the farmers. Thatch cottages was 250 materials. We're on 193 right now. Good grief. Um, okay, we're not quite there yet, but we can move time on pretty quickly. So here we go. Let's just get time chipping on nice and fast. A date at the theatre. 
Oh, lovely. Martin was told about a travelling theatre troupe playing at Sinizio. He decides to use the performance as an excuse to spend time with Avra. Okay, that's good. That's good. Don't kill anyone while you're out there, but it's fine. The troupe Commedia de Calderia relentlessly ridicules the nobility while also poking fun at commoners and burghers. Avra watches the performance intensely, and Martin has a hard time interpreting what she might be thinking. After the first act, Martin starts a conversation about the play. Okay, so mocking them will be comparing our military and using highlighted traits. But I don't think we have any highlighted traits on either side. And yeah, her military is much higher than ours. Praise her ingenuity is diplomacy. Again, she's much better than Martin is. Or try to get Avra to say how she likes the performance so far. Intrigue, fate and highlighted traits. Neither of these are good. The only thing Martin is any good at is the economy. <laughs> we kind of need him back to do the trades, really. Um, okay, do you know what? I mean, comparing intrigue is the closest one. There's no highlighted traits. Um, yeah, it, it's not good. It, whatever. We'll just risk it, I think. Fate's going to intervene as well. Um, okay, so Martin starts a conversation about the play to get the gist of how Avra likes the performance. She can't wait to voice her opinion and start to analyse the plot, characters, themes and hidden meaning and how they affect the people in the audience. Martin feels enchanted while listening to her detailed observations and he can't wait to go back to the second act. Both truly enjoy it and the bond between them grows stronger. Oh, they're really getting on. They're, they're really getting on. There's a little kind of a lovely romance blooming here between murderous Martin and Avra with the gigantic helmet on. Maybe one day she'll lift that thing up and he can see her actual face. Save the date has come up. Oh, they're going to get married. Oh, no, I thought the other two were going to get married. Oh, bother. OK, never mind. I thought Martin was going to get a lovely kind of wedding invite out to us. Malcolm receives an old looking letter. When he opens it, a shiver runs up his spine, noticing it was an invitation to an important celebration that he has now missed. How should he respond to this missed opportunity? Uh, okay, write an apology letter. Diplomacy. Okay, it's from them. It's from them. Oh, no. I mean, the letter was late. It wasn't our fault. We did it on purpose. So write an apology. Diplomacy. And a highlighted trait, but we don't have any highlighted. Throw it away. Just ignore it. Send a gift and an apology our economy. Okay, we're better at that than we are diplomacy. Let's send a little gift and apologise. Okay, it was a tiny amount of money. 15 money, that's fine. We make that back in no time. Uh, okay, so Malcolm Cupboard gained the trait just. So he's picked up a new trait. So he can have, in social conflicts, he can have the let's recess ability. And uh, yeah, picked up military plus one, diplomacy plus one. That's not bad. And they got on okay. So the houses have got a better relation. Okay, that was good. That worked out pretty well. Well done, folks. Okay, another tray proposal coming in saying we'd like your food. I'm really sorry, we can't give away the food. We can't give away the food. It's just a no-go for us. We don't grow enough as it is right now. We're trying to work on it, but you know, we just can't give the food away. So I'm afraid Calamaros, we're going to have to reject that. And that's probably quite bad because they are our liege's liege which is generally quite bad. We don't want to upset them too much. So that's a bit of a bother, isn't it? But never mind, that's okay. Um, oh, Martin doesn't have a task. Uh, okay. Well, hang on. Shouldn't Martin be doing the whole sort of... Martin, don't you want to be going to do the whole marriage thing? Don't you want to be doing that? If I'm... Oh, if I'm ever can marry. Martin. Okay, let's sort that out. So yes, a marriage between two members of your houses that have courted one another. Okay, murderous Martin, marry the lovely, well-helmeted Avra Valentinia. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful on the wedding night when they finally sort of uh, remove that helmet there, just lift the visor up, and then they can do some stalk letter writing. She won't see what she's writing. It'll be amazing. Uh, right, yeah, send a proposal. So I think he's then going to dash off down there. People are all sort of pootling around. Is anybody not doing anything? Betty, Betty's not doing anything. So do we want maybe Betty to pop down here and do some diplomacy? So an official visit or court member. OK, we don't want to send our sort of uh, house leader down to become a court member down here. But somebody else could potentially do that job. That'd be quite good. So yeah, they go and sit on their court. And that's quite an important thing. And if we can sit on their court with our liege's liege's court, that would be quite influential. And um, for now, though... Go and do an official visit. So yeah, Betty, go down there and meet with 
the head person. Yeah, Dazil Calamari. Yeah, go and say hello over there. It's not even that far away. It's just down the road. You could walk that nice and easy, a pleasant afternoon stroll over there, and it'll all be good. Oh, I think we might have enough materials to go and do a building. Hang on a second. Let's go into here. Go to there. Um, go to the farmers. Yes, we can make thatched cottages. Okay, so I think if we get that, we can increase our city size by two. So it'll go up to eight out of 12. And yeah, the wage level can go up. So we can then pay them in wine which means they're going to be happier, they're going to work better, and that thing will change from a sort of a saddish face to a green happyish face. There'll be growth. Okay, that's good. Yeah, do that, please. 64 days to get that done, and we get some thatched cottages. Support for peasant housing will increase the total population the fiefdom can sustain. Okay, right, so do that. So build that. Yeah, so yeah, while that's happening, crops are going to be sort of working at half oomph if you like half strength because of course the people are you know building and doing other stuff and their attention is away from the farming and more building the new thing to help the farming so that's fine for now we can cope with that coming down for a little while we're down two crops every day but we do have a lovely stock of 331 of them which is pretty good so run time on let's get that done i mean if you move time on nice and quick as well it does fly by. Time does go quite quick. Official visit. Betty has travelled to Girolva and is greeted by Dazil Calamaro. Okay, so what shall we talk about? Uh, trade affairs, collective economy. We're not so good at that. State of defensive, collective military, court gossips, collective intrigue. Okay, I was kind of hoping we might be able to use diplomacy, but no. How about court gossip? Because he's got 17 and we've got 13. Do you know what? Let's have a little gossip. Let's have a little bit of a natter about the secrets and the rumours and the slander. Um, okay, certainly into talking about social patterns and recent happenings. After a while, Betty Cover realises they are gossiping away and having a great time. Okay, that's good. Right, so we got on. Oh, we're now friends. <gasps> They're now friends. Okay. I don't know what that does in terms of this game, but that's got to be a good thing. The fact they're friends is a positive thing because that's our liege's liege that's always a good thing okay right so finish that they've had a fun time can we oh, another trade proposal um food for grapes we're okay for grapes thanks i'm sorry the barnabies we're gonna work we're gonna reject that as well stop trying to take our food away <laughs> leave us with our food please we don't have much in the way of food stop trying to nick it from us you lot okay marriage proposal how's it gonna go martin and avra sit across from each other at a private dinner table their eyes fondly focused on each other as they discuss the important matter at hand they have courted each other and are now trying to decide which one of them will join the other's family and reside in their fiefdom once they have resolved this matter, they will finally become engaged to be married. According to tradition, the house that will gain a new family member through marriage also promises to pay for the wedding expenses. Okay, depends how expensive the expenses are, but we should be okay. We've got a decent amount of cash. The new marriage will form an alliance between the two houses, strengthening their family's positions and resources. The cost of the wedding would be small wedding. So 50 crops, we can afford that. 10 gold... Is that all? Uh, 20. Wine. Got loads of that. And you know what? It's the good stuff. It, it will bring out the best of the good stuff. We'll bring out the premium wine. It's in a fancy bottle and everything. And five materials. Yeah, we can cope with that. So try to convince Avra to join House Cupboard. Okay, now we get involved in a social conflict. Martin is happy to join House Valentinia. Second thoughts, it's not a good time for a wedding. I imagine that's if we go, oh, that's expensive. I know we want her to join us. So now we have to go and do a social conflict. Okay, so right to arrange the wedding. So we're going to have a bit of a fight here. We're going to have a social conflict. And if we win the social dispute, we get the right to arrange the wedding within 90 days. And Avra will join us. That's quite good for us. Because that means that we get another person, I believe, to go and do various bits and bobs. Um, however, we have to now do a social battle thing. And when I did this, when I was playing through the tutorial of this game, I was rubbish. I was really bad at this. So let's see if I'm any better this time. So, um, okay, we've got various things we can use in this little social conflict. I don't quite know what they are, and there's no tooltip. But um, yeah, they've got one, so zero, one, two, one. We've not got any of them. But I believe we go to the next page... We can bring people in to help us. So we've got all these companions that have come with us and they can all, all do different things. 
So, uh, for example, the confidant there, they will give us a point in whatever that is, I assume like intrigue or something, and then they've got, I, mean, I don't know what exactly these are, so 3.3 .3 in terms of some sort of fighting ability, so 3.3 .3 in terms of attack, if you like. It's like a little fight. Um, they've got 2.7 in defense, 20 in some sort of healing and one health. Again, uh, oh, here we go. Composure. That's what it is. So attack, defense, health and composure. Okay, so we definitely want to bring the physician because they've got a load of health and they can help us heal up. So bring them. How many can we? Oh, we can bring, oh, do you know, we can bring four people. Okay, so bring the physician because they've got a lot of health. Who is good on attack? Right, the confidant's good on attack. So they can socially attack, which is wonderful. Um, I think maybe you could come along as well because you've got a lot of health. Uh, what's that? Bonus against economy and fast attack. Fast attack sounds good. Um, bonus against intrigue. Again, um, slow attack. Bring a counsellor. Yeah, let's bring a counsellor along. We can bamboozle them with legal jargon. Um, okay. So now we confirm this. And again, I, I, I wasn't very good at this. I found it slightly baffling in the tutorial, but we're just going to wing it and go for it. Right, confirm. So we now have a little kind of social battle board, if you like. So that's where they're going to start. So the enemy are going to start there. We need to start on these. And the idea is we move our way across the board, capturing these nodes as we go. And then eventually, if we capture their nodes, their starting nodes, we win. But if they get all the way down here and capture our starter nodes, they win the social argument, we lose. And then I think in this case, it means that we lose the right to host the wedding. So maybe if we do that, would Martin leave House Cupboard and go and join them? So we really do want them. We need to win this, really. So we can put our people down. So we're kind of, I imagine there's some sort of um, like a, a soiree going on, like a thing happening, some sort of party or some sort of fancy dinner or whatever. And it's all about sort of etiquette and all that sort of stuff because it's a social battle. But um, it plays out a bit like this. So let's put Martin onto there and let's get the physician out, shall we? Pop the physician down. Um, so they're already on. And then we say, OK, right, we're ready. Drag your units to negotiation fields. We can't put anybody anywhere else. You have to start on your thingamabobs. So we are ready. And you can pause time. It's got its own independent time thing. So already they're moving into position. So we'll move those into position. And hang on, as soon as they're gone, we're going to bring more people in. So bring you in and bring... Let's leave that person to the end. Let's leave them to the very end. So bring the counsellor in. Okay, so we're going to come through here. They're going to plop onto the board. We're now capturing those nodes. Okay, so we need to bring more people up and across. But yeah, if we have that arrangement, that might be okay. So if we move them, bring them in. So all of the people are now on the board. So we've captured all these. They got to the middle a bit quicker. And now I think what's happening is they're now kind of... The accountant is attacking our person there a bit socially. So that's our physician. So our doctor is taking damage. Martin Cupboard is also taking social damage. And the confidant is also taking a social hit. So if we run time on, we'll see their green bar is kind of decreasing. They've been retreated away. So you can retreat people away. They're taking some good damage. However, our person here is being quite badly beaten up. So I think we retreat them out of the way. So they move, put them into there. So bring them in to do some more fighting. Hopefully our viticulturalist can weaken them. And I think, does the confidant heal up while they're back there? I'm not entirely sure. Um, Martin is taking a bit of a battering. Martin is certainly losing a lot of his health. Um, yeah, that person, well, that's Avra. Oh, so it's a social battle between the two sort of potential sort of marriage partners. Okay, I think what we do is we put Martin there and we put them over there. Let's do that. So bring them in. Oh, that's not what I want. Hang on. Rotate. Um, oh, I've done something there. I don't know what that is. I want Martin to move out of the way. Um, parlor games. All units fighting for the same objective as this. Change positions with their targets or cheer up. Stop attacking for 10 seconds. Heal lowest health ally with your attack power. Right. Okay. That's, that's not what we want to do. Disable move. 
and you disable your move. What does that do? Toggle auto moving toward an enemy's object. Oh, I've just done a thing and I didn't want to do that. Um, I want you to move. I want you to move around. But I want you to come out over there, please. And maybe you have to retreat. Maybe you can't go backwards. Maybe you can't go backwards. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. We're going to retreat you because you're going to be dead soon. And that will be bad. Right. Bring them in. That person is nearly gone. Their accountant is almost done for. And their confidant is almost done for. Right. Okay. So they're going to get dealt with. Right. They're gone. That person is now gone out of the game. So currently it's five versus four, which is good. And that person's gone as well. So now it's five versus three, which is wonderful. They've just stepped in over there, but we can go just here. So we can now start getting that node for ourselves. Bring them in over there and bring you in over there. So come back onto the battlefield, you lot, please. I think they're still fighting over there. Ooh, right. The councillor is taking a serious kicking. Okay, retreat the councillor, please. Um, they're doing okay. Uh, right, put them up like that. I want them to move over there, but why can't they charge? I don't see. This is what I'm, I don't fully understand. <laughs> um, we could... We could use the Doctor to recharge everybody's health. If we put the Doctor there... Oh no, they're coming in there now. Okay, hang on a minute. You go it right. You go back that way. No, you now can't go back that way. Bother. That would have been a perfect use for the Doctor. Okay, you retreat out of there. You get out of dodge. You come out because you're going to die. You're going to get beaten up. It's her. Ava is an absolutely formidable force. Crikey's. Um, so if we get rid of you, and then move you to there, so you're, you're, oh, you're just being completely beaten up. Right, we need to move you. Why can't we move you? <laughs> um, okay. We can save the life of the confidant, who's going to be dead momentarily. Um, but it'll be good. Uh, can we move you there? Can we put them over? Come on, get out. Oh, botherations. Okay, the confidant's gone. The confidant has gone. They can start moving in on us. Um, what I think we do is put the viticulturalist in. Move them over. Right, this is this is bad. You need to move into the middle. No, you're not moving into the middle. I don't fully understand how this all works, if I'm honest. <laughs> it was a bit befuddling before. I don't really understand what's going on. Um, I want I want that person to move, really. But they're not. So what we could do is... We could use refill, so lose all of our health. So the physician kind of dies, but it says there, connected allies receive 50% more health. So that would get Martin back up on quite a lot of health. It might be worth doing. So do that. So Martin has now charged up their health, which is good. I suspect we're going to lose this conflict. <laughs> it's not going entirely according to plan, is it? And I can't move Martin. Martin, move. Um... Okay, uh, stop attacking for 10 seconds with heal, sorry, no, stop attacking for 10 seconds, heal lowers health ally with our attack power. So that would heal them up, but he's not going to be attacking. Is that bad? He's got 4.6. We need him to move out of the way, really, but I'm not entirely sure how it happens. Right, I go on, bring the counsellor in. I think it's two versus two, but we're very much kind of uh, on the wrong end of this. They're really strong. He's got... They've got... Who's that? Master of the Hunt or something. They've got a bajillion health. <laughs> no wonder we can't do anything with them. Good grief. Okay, right. We're just, we're going to lose this. We're absolutely going to lose this social interaction. It's all going horribly wrong. If we can take them out, we might be okay. Because... But then they've still got so much health. I think maybe it's all going to be over. The councillor's going to go. I don't think there's anything we can do. Unless we just do cheer up. And we just stop attacking and just try to heal the council. But no, that didn't work. And we're not attacking. They're going to take our nodes. Okay, right. That didn't work. I, I've not won one of these before. <laughs> As you can tell. And I can't... So Martin comes back, I think. Martin does come back. He can sort of... Yeah, he can return back onto the battlefield. He's got kind of lives. But we've got nowhere to put him. Because they're down on our nodes. So I don't think we are going to be allowed to arrange the wedding. Um, yeah, I've, I've never... Oh, no. That's bad. We lost Martin. Martin's joined House Valentina. Yeah, I, I did three of those in the tutorial. Didn't win a single one. So uh, four of them, I'm on a 0% success rate. 
I don't fully understand what's happening. I don't really get what's happening and sometimes I want people to move and they can't move or whatever. I don't really get it. But do you know what? There's a social battle thing and I think the military battles are similar in design. Um, okay, that was a complete disaster then. So we're going to lose Martin momentarily. He's going to go and join a different, uh, a different house, which is all a bit sad. So farewell, Martin. Although I suppose at least we're not going to have a murderer hanging around, which I suppose might be quite nice. Um, they would like our food. Absolutely not. Sorry, but stop coming here asking for food, <laughs> you fools. Overseer. Barbara Cupboard, Overseer of the Keep, is frustrated by the inefficiency of the workers. They waste so much of their time on irrelevant matters. Barbara Cupboard decides to take the problem on by longer shifts. So military and diplomacy or doing nothing. Uh, I mean, we might as well give it a go. Can you do longer shifts? Uh, the keep production has changed and keep austerity has changed. I don't quite know what that does, but okay, good. Uh, decreasing the wages of workers. Oh, we might make a little bit more money then, possibly. Which I suppose is always quite a good thing. Um, yeah, Bernard currently not doing anything. So the trade must have finished. So is it worth... Bernard is currently unmarried. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let's try and find a lovely spouse for Bernard, shall we? You're the only one that's around. You're the only viable candidate in the entire world to go marry our beloved Bernard. And you're a daring, lazy idiot who's got terrible stats. I don't think so. I'm really sorry, Bernard. You might have to wait around for a while. Somebody will come along at some point. Mr. Wright will waltz up at some point and you'll find them. But they're not around right now. That is a little bit naff, isn't it? Um, okay, go back over here then. Go back over here. Um, what can we get Bernard doing? I'd like to do some more upgrades. Possibly work with the Masons? Bernard, are you better? Um, no. You make it decidedly worse. Okay, right. Okay, don't do that then. Uh, how about we put Bernard in the vineyard? 4.2 to 4.4. You don't help out at all doing that. Oh no, 4.4 up down to 4.2. Okay, Bernard is not good at helping out over here. Okay, <laughs> right. Don't do that, Bernard, because that's just not going to work at all. Don't do any of that. Maybe, um, could you, could you nip over here, look, and do, um, I kind of don't want Bernard, because Bernard is quite good at the economy. Bernard's good at trading. So what's my Bernard doing some trading stuff? But uh, could you go and do an official visit over there? Why not? Give you something to do, won't it? You go and meet them and hopefully our families can get on and it'll all be fine. And there you go, Bernard, a fun trip out. Okay, right now Martin doesn't have a job, so possibly we should give Martin something to do. Although, what do we get Martin to do? Okay, Martin, remind me, what are you like? You're very good at the economy, so possibly... We should get... Maybe nip over to there, look, and do some trading, potentially for some materials. I think food's going to be all right when we get it sorted. So, could we have some materials from you if we give you some wine? Because we've got absolutely loads of wine. Um, okay. Oh, hang on. We haven't put a person down. Hang on a second. Um, yes, hang on. Teapot. Barbara. Malcolm. Hang on, what? Where's... Why can't Martin go? Can't Martin go and do that? Is Martin not allowed to go and do the trading? Oh. Oh, that's a bit sad. I was kind of expecting Martin to do that, but no, he can't. Um, okay, how about then? How about we take Malcolm out of helping the Masons? Malcolm's okay at doing the economy stuff. Uh, right, can we have materials for some wine? That is, wants more wine. Um... I mean, it's a really generous offer from us. How much more wine are we prepared to give? Would like a shorter deal. Uh, okay. So do we do it over two trips? Do we do it over one trip? So one trip. They want it all to be done in one trip. Oh, crikey. Okay, hang on. Now we can knock that back down again. Buyer has miser. So if we knock that down, look at the amount of money that there was in between those things. If we do that, look. Uh... Yeah, what if we just knock that down? 130, 130 materials for 30 wine. Yeah, send that. Is that going to be okay? I'm not entirely sure. And then go to view. And then Martin, you can help out with the masons. A teeny tiny bit, because you're a bit rubbish at it. But okay. Uh, right, let's try and get this kind of farmer building thing upgrade. Nope, safety negotiations. Ah, Bernard's over here. Okay, so how are we going to do this? 
what was that one? So fortify borders military, eight versus sixteen. Not that one. Security is diplomacy and military. Criminal records is diplomacy and highlighted traits. And we have one of those. Let's share criminal records. Um, yeah, okay. That seems to work out quite well. They start working on how to put in uh, that plan into action. And everybody got on okay. And that's all good. Okay, right, hang on. Bernard, Bernard, while you're out there, can you possibly now do something else? And we could look at intrigue. Is Bernard good at intrigue? No, Bernard's not good at intrigue. Don't do that. Do more diplomacy, possibly. Maybe we do get you as a court member over there. Are we okay over here? How are we perceived over here? Um, oh, not great. Not great. Okay, do you know what? Let's just... Let's go for diplomacy anyway. Or do we put them over here, look? Because we're more popular over here. It would be quite good. Do you know what? Count Palamo. Let's put Bernard... On that court. Let's see. So propose that a member of our family will be stationed in the other house's court as an advisor. That would improve our relations to the family as well as provide in-depth knowledge of what goes on. Okay, that would be quite good. Yeah, let's go and do that. So Bernard, bit of a walk for you, bit of a trek over there, but that's fine. It's a fun stroll. You know, get your steps up, get over your 10,000 for the day. I think it's time for the wedding. Oh, farewell, Martin. I'm really sorry that we messed up that social interaction thing, but I genuinely have no real idea what's going on in those. So yeah, we tried our best and it was completely befuddling and it didn't work out. So here we go. Wedding. House Valentinia is organising a wedding between Avra and Martin. You're invited to send a member of your house to take part in the celebration. Okay, how do we do that then? Um, do we... There's that wedding guest. Um, Barbara. Uh, Barbara can join in as a guest. Can Betty join in? Can we have Betty going? Because yeah, Betty would love a, love a do. Betty would love a party. Um, yeah, okay, absolutely. You go all the way down there. Oh, Martin. It wasn't supposed to be this way, Martin. <laughs> Never mind. We gave it a good shot. Negotiations lead to conflict. Oh, dear. Your trade negotiation, uh, trade de delegation, sorry, arrives at Berta. Your delegation is led by Malcolm Cubbard. He's okay. And Sir Palamo. Okay. They're quite good at the economy as well, welcomes him. After pleasantries have been exchanged, it becomes clear that the different parties have different ideas about how the deal should go, but both are ready to follow up on the original offer. Okay, so negotiations for... Oh no, it's another social conflict. <laughs> ah, right. And now there's two of these and we have two boards to battle across. This went very badly in the tutorial. So we want to pay 10% less for the resources and... We want 15% more resources from the opponent. I suspect maybe this is not going to go entirely according to plan. So we can get five people, not six. Okay. Um, okay, we'll have the physician because they do have a decent amount of health. And you, because you've got some good health. Who's good at attacking? The confidant's good at attacking. The counselor's good at attacking. And I know, the accountant's got a fast attack. I don't know. We could auto-resolve it, but I feel like that's a bit of a cop-out. Uh, let's let's just give it a go. <laughs> but now there's two boards, and I have no idea what to do. They put one person on that board. How about we put you over there, and then we'll have you over there with the physician. Uh, you can go into there, and you can go into there. Um, and already, I think we have to get yeah, ready, then pause, because the computer does kind of jump into action before us. Right, so move out like that, please. And they're going to start claiming those things. I think if we put you into here, um, I don't know, let's put you over there, look. So then we can have an advantage over here. Look. We can get four people versus there. Oh, they're bringing somebody in anyway. Okay, that's fine. But let's see what we can do. So fill up these bits over here. It would be good if we... Oh, crikey, hang on a minute. You move into there. Uh, yep, yeah, and you come into there. Does that help at all in any way, shape, or form? I'm not entirely sure. Right, you go to here. Claim that node. i to try and keep an eye on both sides of the thing now. Right, you've claimed that. You go into here, look. And I think you can both now start attacking that person. Okay. Right, that person, the Master of the Horse, is taking some good damage from us. Whoever that is is taking damage. Their physician is taking some good damage. But our person there is getting beaten up. Our confidant is getting a bit of a kicking. Um, okay, but over here, it's looking good. So if we can take them down, we can get rid of them. That'd be really good. Have we got any abilities we can use? We could lose the physician altogether and heal up those two. 
because they're about to go down anyway. So is it worth just topping their health back up and making those two stronger again? We'd lose a physician, but the physician is pretty, pretty beat up anyway. Let's keep them going for a while, look. Keep them going for a while. Okay, they are, they've retreated. Okay, wonderful. Right, we can go into here. We can go into there. We can work our way toward the goal over here. We might win one of these. <laughs> it will be a glorious day. Right, they've gone, I think. Okay, so they've dropped out. They're slowly moving in, but we can also move in. So we can go over there, look. Um, bring you to there. So you're going to take a bit of a circuitous route around, but that's okay. So you come round here. Oh, botheration, the physician got nobbled and I wasn't looking. I could have healed people up. Okay, never mind. Never mind. The physician is gone. Um, right, move into here. Move into there. Win that side of the board and we can bring them over here. That person's getting really badly beaten up. Okay, hang on. Come back this way and support them. Come back this way. Because <laughs> that person's not... They're just fighting two people on their own. They're going to go down. Hang on. Can we retreat you? Can you retreat? Okay, so they go down. Now you're fighting two people again. Um, okay. That, right, that's done. We've won that board. We've actually won a thing. <laughs> My goodness me. Right, bring the council. Oh, no, hang on a minute. They're not back yet. Is that right? Ah, now they're back. Okay, so bring the cow. Hang on, you can bring them straight in like that. Oh, okay, that's quite good. Uh, yeah, bring them in and bring the, bring everybody in. Pour all the people in. We want more resources from this arrangement. Okay, right, so bring more people in. They're going to go down. Their accountant is going to go down. Our person here, oh, crikey. It's, it's looking a bit dicey. It's going to be us versus us and the councillor versus everybody else, I think. But that person is about to go as well. Right, they've gone. And I think that's their master of the horse. We can take them down as well. That should be okay. Right, so we get them. However, our people are falling by the wayside. They're all just collapsing in sad heaps. Right, if we leave them there. Uh, yeah, they're fighting them. They're fighting them. So, ah. The, the, the big person in charge is taking damage. But then we're also taking damage. But if we take them down, the Master of the Horse needs to go. Right, Master of the Horse goes down. We can move up here, look. And while they're busy fighting our people down here, we can sneak around and try to capture their nodes. I think that seems like a good idea. Um, okay, so is that captured? Yes. Okay, right. Go and grab some nodes. Our person here is going to go down... We're going to have to have a fight directly with them. They could go for our nodes. It's very close. We've only got one person left, though. <laughs> right. Okay, hang on. We've captured that node. Just keep running around. Oh, we can't. Maybe we can't run because we're engaged in a fight. Is that why? Stop attacking. This unit loses all health. All units fighting for the same objective. Return to reserve. That sounds terrible. We don't want to do that at all. That's rubbish. Um, okay, I suspect we're going to win that one and lose that one, which is a bit of a nuisance, but never mind. Yeah, we're being very badly beaten up by Zero Palamo there. We are taking some fairly hefty hits. Okay, so we are topping up our health, but we're not going to be able to fight these two. Hang on, we need to get you back in onto the battlefield at least, just to stop them. But we're going to get got already. <laughs> two of them are just going to be right upon us. Okay, Joe, you know what? We'll take that. We'll take a win. We're going to pay 10% less for our things, but we've got to we've got to give them 15% more stuff. Okay, that's fine. It's wine. We can cover that. There it is. So yeah, it's a draw. We'll call that a draw, I think. I, I, I still don't fully understand this. Initial growth. You have successfully completed initial growth of your fiefdom and of your own power. This is just the first step in your path to prominence. New objectives unlocked. Okay, so now we've completed goal number one of all of these goals here. And there are there are many. There are many of them. So, well, yeah, what's that? Nine across there with a bit of a branch. So there's quite a lot. Number two, make a trade and send a core member. We've done that already. So I think it's going to say, hooray, you've done that. Uh, arrange a wedding. Okay, that is number three. So just by playing, we completed the ones for number two and almost all the ones for number three. So yeah, we did okay with that. Um, a, B, C of diplomacy. Ah, right, okay, yeah, we completed that thing. That's all pretty good. Pause time for a second. Arrange a wedding. We didn't get to do that, but we did upgrade our building, which is pretty good. Food is now looking tragically low. Sadly, sadly low. That's not very good at all. Uh, okay, is there anything we can do about that? Or 
could we go and do some more upgrades? Because, of course, we can do more upgrades around the place. Um, nothing we can do right now, by the look of it. I think we might need a lot more materials, possibly. It does say down here, when we can do an upgrade, it pops up down there. So, uh, okay, do you know what? Let's, let's run time on a bit, shall we? Let's run time on a little bit and just see what happens. What's going to go on next? Can I get to the wedding? I kind of want the wedding to happen, just because I think that'd be a good thing for us to go to, wouldn't it? Court member request. Bernard Cooper has arrived at Palamo's court, but doesn't know how to win Ciro Palamo's favour. Pondering possible strategies, she comes across a group of courtiers gossiping about Ciro Palamo. Okay, ask them to speak for you. Average relations and diplomacy. We're quite good diplomacy. Listen is diplomacy. Join in is intrigue. Okay, no. Let's go for... Um, let's go for listen carefully rather than asking them to speak for us because I feel like that's not very good. Let's listen carefully for some hints. Um, yeah, okay, she gets some insight. Afterwards, she engages in a long conversation with him and is accepted into the court. Okay, I don't know what that does for us, but okay, so Bernard is now on the court over in Palamo's place, which is good, and our houses are getting on. Here we go, wedding ceremony. The wedding between Avra and Martin has begun. As per tradition, both bought a grapevine cutting from their homes to plant side by side. Our wine's better than your wine. As the grapes mature, a wine will be made from them, and it is said that its taste will predict the future of the marriage. I mean, if our, if our winemakers can make it, what's a winemaker called? I don't know what a winemaker's got. I'm sure it's got a posh name, but if our winemakers can make it, It'll be amazing. But yeah, okay, fine. Wedding ceremony is happening. And oh yeah, Martin's gone. Martin has gone, look. They've gone out of the thing. It's all a bit sad. Youth. Penj Cobra has turned 10, which marks the end of his warship in Jerolva. Penj prepares to journey back home to Geek. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Penj Cupboard. <laughs> On the 11th of winter, 1313. Okay, right. So Penj Cupboard can make their way back home. Oh, youth. Um, happy birthday. Pen just turned 10 and is now ready to become a squire. Life is a map of many routes. Some are easy to walk, while others are rocky to climb. You decide which route you take every time you come to a crossing of choices. None are wrong, and that makes your life an adventure. I like that. That's quite exciting. Okay, happy birthday. Right, tick time on. I think before we wrap things up, because I think we have taken a pretty good look at what's going on in the game. We've not looked at everything. So we've not looked at conflict. We've not looked at a big sort of military battle or anything. But also, we've not really dabbled with the whole intrigue thing. So who's quite good at intrigue? Who is a bit sneaky? We've not really got many people that are good at that sort of thing. In fact, it might be... Oh, Teapot. Okay, Teapot. Would you like to go down here and do some intrigue? Recruit a spy. Okay, Teapot. Can we do that? So visit another fiefdom with the intention of finding someone whose loyalty is for sale and hiring them to work for you. Spy recruit delegations appear to be official visits. Okay, so okay, we're going to stop him overseeing the farmers. That's okay, we can cope with that. Um, I mean, who do we get? Them, they like us more. They like us a bit more. So maybe we go and try and recruit Aina Terea as a spy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay, give that a go because we haven't done that yet. That's the only reason why. And we need somebody over here, maybe Barbara, to go and help the farmers because, yeah, we're struggling with the whole farmers thing again. Although, with the farmers, maybe let's move their wages away from food, which will save us some food anyway, and into wine. Let's do that. So we're now getting a bit less food, but... They're happier, so there's no growth per worker, but they're okay. We are going to lose a little bit of wine, but that's okay. That's fine. We can cope with that. In fact, what if we move that down to winemakers? Oh, no. Hang on. Winemakers is one out of one. Okay. Can we do a winemaking upgrade? Can we get, say, taverns? Can we do that? Another person can work in there? Uh, no, we're nowhere near that. That's a million miles off. Okay, never mind. For now, we've got plenty of wine got huge big kind of stores of wine everyone can have wine it'll just use it like water or something it's all fine um forge truths teapot visits the local smith in verona to get a broken buckle fixed he has an interesting conversation with the smith about the misbehaviors of members at terea while he quickly repairs the buckle teapot realizes this is the perfect opportunity to offer the smith a deal to get delicate information about terea without their knowledge 
Okay, so just they finished making the deal, Aina, ah, that's the person we're trying to recruit as a spy, uh, walks up to him looking suspiciously at Teapot and demanding an explanation of what business they have at the Smith's workshop. Um, okay, so we are pretty good at intrigue, so that might work. We've both got 15, though, so that's okay. Bluff is intrigue and a highlighted trait, which is not there, or blather on is intrigue and highlighted trait, still not there. Let's tell a story about the buckle. Let's be true, because that is exactly what happened. Um, oh, okay, right. She doesn't believe the smith. It didn't work. The smith breaks down in tears and begs for forgiveness. Oh, oh dear. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, that didn't work at all well. That didn't work at all well. We all fell out. There was a big argument, and now nobody likes anybody. Wonderful, good job, everybody. Splendid stuff. Visiting the master. Bernard wants to improve her people-reading skills. After a long search for the right master, Bernard has applied for an apprenticeship and is pleased to be getting help to improve her skills. Which area of expertise should she focus on? The ABC of body language, that's military, reading between the lines is diplomacy, or oh, that's diplomacy and highlighted traits. I mean, go for that. Yeah, reading between the lines. Do that then. And intrigue went up by one, and they gained dissatisfied and cunning. Okay, you've got cunning. Entry plus three, and you can do sly things in military conflicts. Okay, <laughs> good, good. It all seems to be sort of coming together a bit. Some people are faring better than others, but that's okay. Village market. Teapot travels through a village during its daily market. He notices some good deals. Maybe there is something to send back home. Okay, we could buy 100 crops for 70 gold. Yes, we need that because we're running out of food quite a lot. Do that, please. That'll keep us going for a good long time. And we have a big pile of cash. Marvellous. Um, yeah, Penge and Teapot aren't doing anything anymore. Can we put them to work? So I thought just for the sake of completeness, we should possibly go and have a little bit of a fight with somebody. Let's go and have a bit of a war because we haven't seen how that works in the game. But we can't really go to war with anybody because we have to be really, really, really grumpy with each other. Looking at that over there, so I picked on these guys here. So Countess Terea of Verona. We don't really like them very much at all. Minus 30, but to declare war, you've got to have a relation of minus 40. So we need to do something to them to upset them a great deal. I don't know what that could be. I don't know what that could be. Uh, we could send young Penge off to be a squire somewhere. That'd be quite good. Do you know what? Down here, look. Down here. We're kind of falling out of favour with them for a bit. Can we do that? Mil no, not military. Hang on. Where was it? Um, diplomacy squire. Let's send young Penge to be Dezeel Calamaro Squire. They're the head honcho. Penge code is important to us. Why don't we do that and just, you know, try to keep relations good between our house and our, our squires. No, not our squire. Our liege's liege. That'd be quite good. So, yeah, go and do that, please. That'd be quite good. And, you know, I think with that done, we will wrap things up for now with our look at great houses of Calderia. I mean, in a way, I think comparing it to Crusader Kings 3 is inevitable because it does have that kind of Crusader Kings 3 feel to it. But it's a little bit different. It's more about the sort of a lot of people going about the place. You don't raise troops or anything. I mean, we haven't seen the combat yet, but I don't think you actually raise troops. I think you do a sort of a fight thing, a bit like the social discussion, social conflict thing we saw. I think it's a little bit like that. So you put your people out and then they have different skills and things. I think it's a little bit like that. And it's more focused on the people and the interactions between the houses and the families and all that kind of stuff and the people. And I quite like it. You've got to manage your sort of resources over there. You've got to balance it out. And people are good at certain things. The only one thing I would say is that for somebody who's pretty terrible at recalling names it does become a little bit kind of a little bit bewildering when it says ah oh, Countess Fortena has come from Stanthe and they've been speaking to Duke Calamaro of Girolva and they were laughing at Baron Laguna of Buguena because Baroness Parlante of Castavare fell over and I don't know trips and spilled some wine on them and I, I can't recall who people are <laughs> I don't know who that is I need to sort of go ah right that's our neighbour and that's our liege and that's our other neighbour, okay, and they're down here, and they're all the way down there. Right, okay, now I know who people are. So sometimes all the names being kind of banded around, it does become a little bit baffling in my head, because I'm not very good at the whole name thing, but do you know what? That's okay, that's fine. I think overall, it's very interesting. I do like it. I do like how it kind of plays out and how it works. There's a lot of little kind of story things that pop up as well. 
There's a lot of different things that can happen, and there's all sorts of different interactions. There's you know, weddings and courting and wards and squires and meetings and espionage and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we didn't really see any kind of espionage stuff. We're not that good at it, unfortunately. Betty's sort of all right, but yeah, we're not that good at the whole spying thing. But um, do you know what? We did make some lovely wine, and our economy is pretty heavily focused on the wine. I think if we were to continue playing, that is where we'd go. We just make a sort of a focus on producing an awful lot of wine, get lots of kind of special buildings in to get more grapes, get more wine, and then trade the wine away for everything else we need because that's kind of key to it all. We can make some good wine and it's worth quite a lot. So that's what we would do. So yeah, the Geek Wine is very well renowned in the world, which is lovely. But yeah, I think we'll finish things up for now. I think we have had a pretty good look at the game to see how it all sort of fits together and such. And it's very enjoyable. It's very enjoyable. Into early access today, as we said earlier, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description if you're interested. And there was a demo on there. I'm not sure that the demo is still available now that early access has gone live. I'm not entirely sure but you know what have a little look anyway if you're interested and you might be able to have a little dabble at the demo before then plunging into early access if you kind of like the game but there we go we'll finish things up for now hopefully you have enjoyed this if you have please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and nonsense that we get up to in the geek cupboard but for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Look at Swain's hat. Oh, it's worth it just for the hat. Oh, it's so pointy. Oh my goodness me. Okay, right, we might have to deploy the decency mugs there. <laughs> Things are going to get a bit weird, everybody. Book yourselves in. I am in the throes of ecstasy, aided by a shoe. He's kept his hat on. <laughs>